We come to you tonight with breaking news. A Michigan jury just a short time ago finding Father James Crumley guilty of four counts of involuntary manslaughter, one for each of the students his son murdered at his high school in 2021. The jury of 12 deliberating for about 11 hours over two days before reaching their verdict. And that's roughly the same amount of time a jury needed to convict Ethan Crumley's mother, Jennifer Crumley, last month. Trevor Alt is joining us now with that story. Tonight, a Michigan jury finding James Crumbly guilty of four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Guilty of involuntary manslaughter. One for each of the students his son murdered at Oxford High School in 2021. Last month, his wife Jennifer convicted on the same charges the first parent held criminally responsible in their child's school shooting. In James's trial, prosecutors allege he was negligent, ignoring signs of his son's deteriorating mental health and buying him the gun used in the shooting. James Crumbly was presented with the easiest, most glaring opportunities to prevent the deaths of these four students, and he did nothing. Hours before the shooting, James and his wife met with their son's counselor over concerning drawings, but they declined to take their son home from school. James did not take the stand in his own defense, but his wife testified during her trial that it was her husband's responsibility to keep the family gun secure. It was more his thing, so I let him handle that. The defense argues James had no way of knowing what his son was planning. James Crumbly had no idea what his son was capable of. I'm joined by ABC's Trevor Alt, as well as ABC News legal contributor and defense attorney Brian Buckmeyer. Trevor, I'll start with you. You were at the school the day of the shooting with, with prosecutors when these charges were filed, and you've been in court for both trials. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a big deal. What do you make of this verdict? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's hard to say that it's stunning when his wife was already convicted, but it's still unbelievable and unprecedented to watch parents be convicted for their role in their child's school shooting. And as those verdicts are read, I cannot help but think of, so just to the left of the camera that's filming all this video, Stephanie, every single day in court are the family members of the four students who were killed in this shooting. It's been more than two years since that shooting happened, and every day in court, for Jennifer Crumbly's trial, for James Crumbly's trial, the parents of those victims sat there, they waited patiently, and they said that they just wanted justice and accountability. Now that they have four guilty verdicts for both parents, they made it clear every time, this isn't about some set punishment, there isn't some set uh, prison sentence that they want. They more want the fact that it's on the record and now for the first time, we have these two parents on the record in a case in which prosecutors said from the beginning was so egregious, ignoring all of those red flags, buying the weapon for the shooter, refusing to take their child home from school just hours before. Uh, and now it's a new day in how these prosecutors might respond to mass shootings. A very unique circumstance. Uh, Brian, I want to bring you in from a legal standpoint. What's your reaction to the jury finding uh, him guilty on all four counts of involuntary manslaughter and the potential sentencing for that? Yeah. Well, Stephanie, like Trevor said, it wasn't too surprising considering we've seen this verdict already from Jennifer Crumbly. Uh, but it is interesting that we now have two parents who are found guilty of a type of liability that we don't really see in the criminal justice system. It's called vicarious liability. Most people understand it as uh, an employer can be on the hook for what an employee does. Now we're having that same concept used for parent to child. And when we look at the sentence, each one of them being in voluntary manslaughter for one to 15 years, uh, they could be serving significant jail time. However, my understanding of Michigan law is that because of the level of felony that involuntary manslaughter is, the maximum they can get is 30 years. So somewhere between two and 30 years, they could be potentially facing a sentence. And Trevor, as we were watching the verdict come down, we, we saw James Crumley there in the courtroom. He was kind of shaking his head. Where do things go from here for the Crumleys? Yeah, so step one uh, pretty soon, Stephanie, is going to be the sentencing. It's set for April 9th. That had already been set for April 9th for Jennifer Crumbly. They were waiting until this trial had finished. And now today, James Crumbly is going to be receiving his sentence the same day. So April 9th is when we find out how long they will end up spending in prison. They've already spent more than two years in jail and according to Jennifer they have not spoken since then but also uh, looming in the background of all of this while it's not a criminal trial the families of the victims had fi have filed some pretty gigantic lawsuits against the school and in the process of James and Jennifer Crumbly going on trial school officials who met with this student who met with the parents the day of the shooting did testify that they also 
did not consider this child to be a threat to other students, that they failed to search his backpack even though he had drawn on his math homework a gun with a person shot. He wrote blood everywhere. The thoughts won't stop. Help me. They knew it was serious enough to call the Crumbleys into the school, but they didn't conduct the search, which they would have had the right to do had they so chosen. So it's possible while they might not be held criminally liable for the shooting, Stephanie, they could be held uh, civilly liable. And there's a pretty multi there's a multi million dollar lawsuit that's still hanging in the balance here against the schools. Something else to watch. And, and Brian, the Cr Crumleys are the first parents to ever be charged. Trevor touched on this earlier. What could this mean for future mass shooting cases? Well, prosecutors across the country now have a blueprint as to how they can find uh, parents potentially responsible for the deaths of victims to mass shootings. Now, for Michigan, one of their involuntary manslaughter was very unique to their own law, being that a parent has a duty to, to protect other people from their child. Maybe we could potentially see legislation in other states um, stemming from that idea as well. But at this point, where we have a country where uh, the unfortunate reality is we can't recover from one uh, mass shooting before the next one happens, prosecutors can be looking to this case and say, maybe this could be a solution going forward. Yeah, and, and, and Trevor, you mentioned the, the parents of, of those teens that lost their lives in that courtroom day in and day out. So heartbreaking for them. But as you said, hopefully they can find some sort of hope and resolve in the justice that they saw here tonight. Yeah. Trevor Alt, thank you so much. Brian Buckmeyer, thank you to you as well. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.